Gaia hypothesis states that the Earth is alive. Formulated by James Lovelock, it proposes that our planet functions as a single organism that maintains conditions necessary for its survival. The ancient Greeks called their Earth goddess G, or Gaia. Gaia was Mother Earth, gentle, feminine, and nurturing, but also ruthless to those who crossed her. Lovelock defines Gaia as a complex entity involving the Earth's biosphere, atmosphere, oceans, and soil in a feedback or cybernetic system which seeks an optimal physical and chemical environment for life. The search for life on Mars led to Lovelock's idea about the existence of Gaia. As part of a NASA team formed to look for life on other planets, Lovelock was asked to propose hypotheses that would demonstrate whether life existed on a planet or not. One of these hypotheses was the idea that gases in an atmosphere on a dead planet would be in chemical equilibrium. That is, all the possible chemical reactions that could have happened would have happened, and the gases of the atmosphere would be relatively inert. On the other hand, if life existed on the planet, gases in the atmosphere would not be in balance, and chemical reactions would be actively occurring. Scientists looked at the gaseous composition of Mars and Venus. They saw that the atmosphere was largely composed of the generally unreactive gas, carbon dioxide. Both of these planets are dead. Earth's atmosphere is an unusual and unstable mixture of many gases. Thus, life is present. Earth's gas was not in chemical equilibrium, yet appeared to be maintained in a constant state. This suggested a regulation of the planet's atmosphere. The whole system of the climate, the rocks, the air, and the ocean is a self-regulating process. The Earth acts as a single system, a coherent, self-regulated assemblage of physical, chemical, geological, and biological forces that interact to maintain a unified whole, balanced between the input of energy from the sun and the thermal sink of that energy into space. The Earth regulates flows of energy and the recycling of materials. Energy from the sun is constant and unlimited. It's captured by the Earth as heat or photosynthetic processes and returned to space as long-wave radiation. But the mass of the Earth is limited. Thus, while energy flows through the Earth, matter cycles within the Earth. Everything that happens on the planet, the life and death of trees, the increase or decrease in emissions of carbon dioxide, the planting of croplands, all have an effect on our planet. If the Earth is indeed self-regulating, then it will adjust to the impacts of man. These adjustments may act to eventually decrease and limit his numbers, or to exclude man altogether. Life, or the biosphere, regulates the climate. This homeostasis is like the internal maintenance of our own bodies. According to Lovelock, the geophysiologist sees life as a system open to the flux of matter and energy, but that maintains an internal steady state. Our body temperatures are maintained by feedbacks between the brain and various organs and systems of the body. If it is too cold, our bodies produce heat by shivering. If it is too warm, our bodies sweat and remove heat through evaporation. On Earth, temperature is regulated in a similar fashion. Albedo refers to the color of a planet and its ability to absorb or reflect light. Dark areas, such as mountains in summer, forests, or even the ocean absorb heat energy from the sun. Light areas, such as deserts, clouds, or polar ice caps, reflect the sun's energy away from the Earth. Global temperature is regulated by clouds. If there are more clouds, more sunlight is reflected from the Earth, and the Earth cools. Fewer clouds, more sunlight reaches the surface, and the Earth warms. Many factors affect cloud cover. The interaction of the atmosphere with the ocean is one. One mechanism is the release of cloud condensation nuclei by marine phytoplankton. When the sun is shining brightly, phytoplankton grow rapidly and produce airborne particles. When water vapor in the atmosphere condenses or freezes around these particles, or nuclei, clouds form. 
The increase in clouds lowers the temperature of the Earth, but also blocks the sunlight to the phytoplankton. The phytoplankton then grow more slowly, less clouds are formed, and the temperature of the Earth rises. The cycle continues in a self-regulating and balanced manner. Because the Earth's mass and material elements are fixed, the Earth must recycle elements to make them available for other processes. Otherwise, the whole system would run down, and the Earth would be as dead as the Moon. Living organisms are a vital part of these cycles. Masses of material are consumed, transformed, transported, and recycled by the actions of living organisms.